it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. My man, Frankie Rob, man, long time no help, man. What's going on with you? Man, everything's smooth, man. How's it going on with you, bro? It's good, man. It's good, man. Um, even though I'm off today, I um, uh, talked to Fox News this morning, man. Today's an exciting day, nervous day for Ohio State Big Ten fans. So, like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're hearing that, you know, uh, there might be a voting count voting today, and we're just hoping for the best, man. Yeah, man. Like, I know you've been busy, man. Like, like, like you, my brother. That I became a fan of yours, man, because you're one of those modern day dudes that really see somebody standing up for something, you know, to inspire the, the generation under us. And so, congrats on you getting everything done on your end, bro. You know what I'm saying? You represent real, real, a lot right now. So, you hold it down, bro. Yeah, man, I appreciate it, man. Let's, uh, I'm just trying to do what I can and, and, and then inspire some parents to, to do what they're doing. So, it's, it's a collection of everything that's making this, made this happen, but we, we definitely gonna see by tomorrow. We'll know if, uh, the Buckeyes are gonna be playing in October or playing in November. You know, that's what I think. So, let's go ahead and get into this episode, man. We have a very, very, very special guest. We have Monica Johnson, the, I mean, the mother of Paris Johnson Jr., uh, offensive tackle, Ohio State. Monica, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for being here. I know you don't have much time, but we uh, just appreciate you breaking bread with us, and uh, we definitely want to get into your son's story and uh, just everything else. So, um, okay, he's you know he's six seven, two hundred and ninety pounds. I mean that's that's humongous. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a beast. <laughs> but um, uh, some people would say like you know because of his size, you know that he would uh, easily be a, a D1 talent and uh, I, 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 I kind of disagree a little bit you know what I'm saying it still takes work effort fundamentals and all that yeah. kind of stuff parenting all that stuff so uh, just, just I agree so, I, I definitely agree so start us off just from the beginning as as uh, uh, his youth football years like uh, what sports did he play when he started playing sports and stuff okay. like that sure but let me start off by saying this because of Coach, Coach Mick and that conditioning staff at Ohio State, mm. Paris is now 308 pounds. Can you believe that? Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Okay. 308 pounds now. So he, he's looking good and feeling good. And, and what I love, too, is that because of the weight gain, it has not compromised his speed. It hasn't compromised his flexibility and his, and his feet work. So he's actually faster, stronger, and better having to do the gain you know, um, that additional weight. So kudos to Coach Mick and that staff. But Paris started playing football when he was five years old. And he, I remember him coming to me because the plan was for Paris just to maybe start, you know, tackle football middle school. That was my that was my thought. That's the plan that I had. Uh, but he came to me at five and told me he wanted to play football. He thought it was really cool and he wanted to be out there with his friends. And I told him, I said, if you're going to play football, we're doing tackle. We're not doing this flag. We have friends that were playing flag football. So we're not doing flag. I'm not even going to start you off like that because that's not real football. I said, because you get hit right. in football. So if you're going to do this, we're going to do this. We're mm -hmm. not going to have to do it if we're going to do this. So he started playing tackle football at five. But prior to that, Paris, um, he started off in gymnastics. Mm. Um, at, at three, I put him in gymnastics because I felt that he needed to work on flexibility and to really understand his body before I put him in some type of organized sport. So he just started off in gymnastics, learning how to flip, how to um, work on his core and things of that nature. And he enjoyed it. And then at um, five, he started playing soccer. So he did some soccer to work on his on his feet work because I wanted to introduce him to every sport so he started soccer and then he played a little bit of hockey that didn't last very long but mm. he did a little bit of, a little bit of hockey he played a little bit of baseball but football is where the love and the passion was he he grasped it right away um he loved the other sports he enjoyed them it was more like a hobby for him mm -hmm. but football was a part of him he enjoyed it he loved it he embraced it so he started again he started playing at five he played for this group called the westchester outlaw here in cincinnati ohio so he played with them from five 
um, all the way up through middle school. And what was unique about the Westchester Outlaw, it was their first year when Paris joined their organization. It was the team's first year, and they had a K. They had a six, seven-year-old team. That's what they called it. Mm-hmm. And since Paris had just turned five uh, when he joined the team, he was with the six, seven-year-old um, players because he was just as tall as the seven-year-old, so they allowed him to play. <laughs> so he started playing with that group, and he continued to um, move up with that group because you know how the group will move up mm-hmm. and they moved up to the first grade group, the second grade group. So even though he was still in kindergarten, he was with kids that were in first and second grade playing football with those kids. So he always played up um, since he was five years old and he didn't know any, any different until he got to middle school and then he was with his right group and that's when he realized like, wow, I've learned a lot because I started at five and plus he played up the entire time up in up into middle school. That is uh that's crazy. So what what was the size of, around middle school? Middle school parents, I recall I wanna say seventh grade, because I'm five ten. So I wanna say seventh grade, Paris was taller than me seventh grade. I wanna say he was almost six feet tall, wasn't quite six feet tall, um, in seventh grade. But by eighth grade, Paris was nearly six two, six three, around eighth grade. Um, and then when he started his freshman year um, in high school, he was six three, and he grew like four and a half inches in one school year. Mm. So, so how many coaches, you know, a you know, um, school coaches and like summer coaches programs camps were pulling at you to be a part of them how how did you pick your high school and what kind of camps were pulling at him at that time okay as far as camps the only camp that Paris participated in was the youth camps at Alabama and Ohio State and he did sound mind and body camp that's um, in Detroit Michigan so he only did those camps during um, the you know the youth camp so he did the Alabama camp sixth and seventh grade mm-hmm. um and he did ohio state camp eighth grade and sound in mind sound mind and body camp eighth grade um so because he, he wanted to get a taste of what college football would be like when he was he started asking in grade six so we started him doing those camps at that time but we decided as a family once he started high school that he wasn't going to be participating in those camps because I wanted him to focus on where he was at that time and making sure that he can compete at his level instead of going from camp to camp. And I didn't want him to hurt. I didn't want his body to be abused and um, taken advantage of that summer prior to going into the football season. I know it's very important to take care of your body Mm -hmm. leading up to the season. I didn't want him to his body to be beaten down from all these camps during high school because I felt he needed to really learn at that time where he was. So we didn't do any camps, none through high school. And that's kind of, some people are shocked to hear me say that, but he did zero camps. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, um, you can skip the camps and go directly to the schools and make those relationships with the schools early. If you kind of know where you kind of, your son or daughter has kind of set me in that, you can pick schools right. at, at their level to um, definitely get a direct connection with the coach. You know, I mean, I imagine both of those camps, you, you got an opportunity to talk to Urban Meyer, probably got an opportunity to maybe talk to uh, uh, Coach Saban, did you? I, I, we did. We did have an opportunity to have conversations with those gentlemen, but to be honest with you, I'm sure they did not remember Paris and I during that time. Oh, yeah. okay. They were very nice and thoughtful. But you're right, it was great to have those conversations. Even when, at the conclusion of the camp, I would have Paris write thank you cards, thank you notes to the coaches, mm. and, and put a picture in there just to say thank you for allowing me to be at this camp. And then I also encouraged him to list the different things that he learned and what he needed to work on and just thank the coaches for their time. So I would have him send cards to the head coach to – the position group coach, just to say thank you. And so, you know, just trying to teach them how to network, how to communicate, because you're right, you can build those relationships and you never know when you're going to meet that person again. Definitely. Before I go too far, I, I do want to ask you, uh, so parents playing all those different sports as a, at a young age, 
how you think it affected him as as now, you know, as a as a young man, and uh, like what some things he learned from playing those different sports. Well, I think what he learned one he he discovered the sport that he really loved. That was number one, mm. which I was very happy he chose football. So mm. that was number one. Um, number two, he he learned. I put him in a position where he had an opportunity to meet kids from different backgrounds. So if he had not been introduced to hockey, he wouldn't have been able to interact with that world. Um, mm-hmm. If I hadn't introduced him to gymnastics, he wouldn't have taken flexibility as um, as important as he take it today. So I'm, I'm grateful that those, those different sports helped him to become who he is today. Um, and he values those other sports because even the feet work that he has, he, he says, Mom, I know I learned that from playing soccer, but most importantly, Paris learned that by playing on the defense side of the ball. Most people don't know that Paris played on defense from the time he was five up until his freshman year in high school. He played on defense. He didn't play offense until his sophomore year. Awesome. That's uh, And that's what's crazy because – like uh, the pot, the YouTube show that we're having this Sunday, that's one of the questions. So we on on, on our YouTube show, which you're going to be a, a guest on this Sunday. Um, the question is the, a tweener question. Tweener questions mean it's a word that we made up. Um, picking a position for a player between two positions. So some players pick from their heart. Mm-hmm. Other players pick from mm-hmm. their ability of how far it can take him maybe into the NFL or whatever. So playing offense to defense or offensive tackle to defensive tackle or wide receivers or cornerback. Uh-huh. So that's kind of what, what our uh-huh. tweener series is because what happens is as, as parents, you really have to do the research of the measurables of your kid to decide yes. which position to pick because you can't you just – well, you can do whatever you want to do, but I feel like you can't just go off your heart because if you go off your heart, you know what I'm saying, it might stop you as far as being being going to the NFL or your value as a player, you know. So you really got to do research and find out what's the best position for you because at the end of the day, the, the, the college coaches on most levels are going to put you at the best position for them, you know. I so. agree. I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree with that because when Paris, of course, when he started playing – Little League football, Paris play corner, because, again, he was just as tall as the seven-year-olds. But, of course, Paris is not at the same level developmentally mm-hmm. as a seven-year-old when he's five. Mm-hmm. So Paris played corner, so he was all the way in the backfield. And as he continued to grow and develop as a football player, they slowly moved him to the line of scrimmage. Now, of course, Tom Paris was in fourth, fifth grade. At that point, he was tiring over everyone. He played defensive end. So he played defensive then all the way up to his freshman year. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until his freshman year that it was his high school freshman, it was his high school coach at St. Xavier High School, because Paris went to St. Xavier High School for three years before he transferred to Princeton, which is a whole other story. But Paris was at St. Xavier High School his freshman year. And at the end of the season, um, his head coach at the time was Steve Speck. Steve called me into his office, and at this point, Paris was growing like crazy. So he's nearly set six, seven at this time. And so he came to me, he said, Monica, he said, listen, he said, Paris is not going to play defensive end in college. He says, your son can play D1 football. He said, but he's not going to play defensive end. I said, well, where do you see him? He said, I want to move him to offensive tackle. He said, now, if you oppose that, I can leave him at defensive end. He can play defensive end for me here in high school. But if you want him to be successful in college, he said, they're going to move him to offensive tackle because of his size. And that position, you need time to learn. You need time to develop. You got to work on your hands. You got to work on your feet. You got to work on your kick mm-hmm. step. He says, and you also have to work on your you're thinking because you have to force somebody to do something they don't want to do. He said, when you play offensive tackle, he said, and I need time to develop him and get him ready. And so of course he's the expert. And so I said, Hey, coach Speck, if that's what you believe and you think we need to move Paris to tackle, let's move him to tackle. And, you know, he came to me first before he went to Paris because he wanted to make sure he and I both were on the same page. So he presented that to Paris and, 
Paris is very coachable. Paris is like, listen, I love football. I want to be on the field. If this is going to get me on the field, mm -hmm. this is going to get me a scholarship off a coach, I'll play whatever I need to play because I love the game. He said, that's, that's fine. So Paris ended up, he switched him to offensive tackle. He never played offensive mm -hmm. tackle. The closest he ever played to tackle was playing tight end in middle school when they needed an extra body to block, you know, but he really didn't have any experience playing that position. And so we actually had to get him some help. And so Paris um, started training. He started training with Anthony Munoz. He started training with Willie Anderson, which is a family friend of ours. He started training with those gentlemen and they got him ready. They took one summer and they got him ready to play tackle. And when Paris came back sophomore year, he was the starting left tackle at St. Xavier High School by the middle of the season and dominated. And that's when the scholarship offers started coming in. He went from one to 50 scholarship off offers in a matter of six months. Wow. What, 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 yeah. what year was it? You said sophomore? This was a sophomore year. He received his first scholarship offer from Rutgers May of his freshman year mm -hmm. um, because they saw his upside. You know, they were very honest, you know, with me, Randy. They came in and they saw his upside and they said, you know what? We, we know he's athletic. He has the ability. And they confirmed that if he was to go to Rutgers, they would move him to tackle. And so they offered him. And But then once he got the starting position at high school and started dominating, offers started pouring in. Frankie Rob, man, um, Man, just talk about that's crazy. that's crazy. But just, I mean, my thing is it all comes down to two. Like, I hear a story about just being uncomfortable and playing up. Like, that's vital, man. How important is it to, to, like, to play up and be uncomfortable at a younger age? Frank Rock? Mm -hmm. well, you know, Jacquez never played with his age group in Palm Grammar. Never did that. That's just, I grew up in the, in a bad neighborhood here in Jacksonville, so the coach always wants you to, you know, play with the bigger boys to make it tough or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was always something that we had to do here is pay older, pay up, uh, pay, pay older people to solidify your name as somebody is worthwhile. So I did that mm -hmm. to my son. He did the same thing and, uh, you know, had to do better. He's, he's doing good, but for the most part, I think that hearing Paris story, you know, kind of reminds me like he's from, like you from where I'm from. Right, because you know, you know, flag football, no matter that, you finna, you finna go hit somebody, and you stayed on road. I hope a lot of moms here that be open to your son going from yeah. one position to the next position, believing into the system or what they say that these days, the process. You know? Yes, absolutely. Because I know I'm not the expert, you know, so I really relied on what the coaches told me, and I never questioned it. I didn't argue with Coach Beck, you know, of course. I think the defensive end tackle? Oh my God, how is he going to do this? But we found the solution and, and we made it happen. It took some sacrifice, but you know, we took some financial sacrifice mm -hmm. um, to us not being able to travel as a family to make these things come to pass. But we sacrificed and, and we made it happen as a family. And, and I'm glad we made the sacrifice because he went from, which is so crazy went from playing defensive end freshman year to being the number one tackle in the country, number one player in the state of Ohio, top seven overall in the country. Mm -hmm. You know that's God. You know, that's God. That's God, and that's God putting people in our lives to help him realize his goal. All right, so let's, let's talk about um, being a female in a male-dominated kind of sport. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know you trusted the coach that you – that, that – that, that, um, that helped you out in that situation. But what advice would you yes. give to another female about, you know, just uh, being sure about what these coaches are telling them? Because they tell men <laughs> all kind of stuff. But you know they like to tell you know, females different things. What advice would you give to other females? What advice I would give is do your research ahead of time. So when Coach Beck mentioned, first of all, before I even met Coach Beck, I did um, my research on the different schools in Cincinnati because Paris was originally was going to attend Princeton High School in Cincinnati for high school because that's our family high school here. We, everyone in our family went to Princeton. Mm -hmm. So Paris was going to go to Princeton High School. But there was a time when Princeton had a turnover of coaches mm -hmm. where every year was a different coach. Um, so as a mom, 
I'm looking for a great academic program as well as athletic program because I want parents to have both. So Princeton had the academics, but the athletic program in regards to football, it was a turnover in coaches. And so that I was a little apprehensive about that. So we decided that Paris would not go to Princeton because they had a turnover of coaches. So then we looked at private schools. So we looked at um, Moeller, Cincinnati Moeller High School. We looked at St. Xavier High School here in Cincinnati. We had it narrowed down to both of those schools. I allowed Paris to shadow the schools and do some academic camps at the school and football camps just to see if he felt comfortable with the atmosphere there. And he liked both schools, but he instantly fell in love with Steve Speck at St. Xavier High School. There was an instant connection with the both of them. So I did my research on Steve Speck, and I thought he was very knowledgeable. He understood the game. He had great relationships with um, with college coaches. And so I felt comfortable at, at that point. So I scheduled a meeting with him just to talk to him about the academics as well as athletics at the school. And I wanted to make sure that Paris was properly evaluated because I want the truth. I, I don't want someone to tell me what I want to hear. Mm-hmm. I wanted someone to tell me the truth and where they saw Paris and what they can do to help him. And so he told me he could help Paris, and he did. And he did. He had him evaluated, and he ended up playing tackle. And it was a great experience. And the other thing that I did, too, is that besides doing research, I started reaching out to people that played the position. So I would encourage moms, so if you have a son that's playing tackle, reach out to people who play tackle and learn the position from them, ask them questions. So I would reach out to Anthony Munoz, I would reach out to Willie Anderson to learn more about the position, the mindset. Also, what type of questions do I need to be asking when I'm going on recruiting visits? Mm -hmm. What do I need to look for? Um, So, you know, just learning about the position, because it's a unique position, playing tackle. It's not like playing corner or safety because you're on an island, you're playing by yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you're playing tackle, that one position is five people in one. So you have your tight, you have your tackle, you have your guard, you have your center, your guard, your tackle. They have to be in sync. So just making sure that um, there's chemistry in that, in that position room when it comes down to playing that position because it's really those five gentlemen make up one and just learning that position. So I would encourage parents to do their research on the position, learning more about the position and learning about who's going to be coaching your kid. We all know that Coach Day is a phenomenal person. He's a great coach at Ohio State. But Mm -hmm. really, Paris spends more time with his position coach Mm -hmm. than he does with Coach Day. Mm -hmm. Paris spends more time in the the, um, weight room and with Coach Nick than he does with Coach Day. So that's another thing parents should research is the strength and conditioning programs because that's where our boys will spend most of their time. Definitely. Uh, Before we get into the recruiting aspect of it, Let's talk about you know his his accomplishments in in uh, high school. Like, uh, did, were y'all close to winning championships? Did y'all winning any championships? Right. Well, Paris has his during his high school career. He's not won a state championship, but they've made it to the playoffs mm-hmm. um, all four years that Paris played in, in high school. Um, his own awards, Paris has been they're endless. I would have to pull out his resume, mm-hmm. but they're endless. <laughs> From, again, like I had mentioned before, how he ranked seventh in the country, number one in his position, number one in the state of Ohio. Paris was also named the Anthony Munoz um, Lineman of the Year. He was named the All-American um, Man of the Year. Because Paris also has a foundation that he started two years ago, so he does community service, so he's really active in the community. He's also um, graduated with a 4.0 GPA. Mm-hmm. He's fluent in Mandarin Chinese. Um, so it's, it's endless, um, the accolades that, that he has received and the service that he has done. What's the last one you said? That ma- you said Mandarin something? What's that? Mandarin Chinese. He speaks Chinese. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's really cool. That, that's, that's great. That's, okay. that's great to have, period, just for business. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that's cool. So that's after football. So that that's awesome. So let's jump into this recruiting because everybody thinks because you have a kid that can almost go to any school in the country 
that it's an easy decision mm -hmm. or it's just no because sometimes you pick the wrong school and they just they it's hard it's hard as far as when you have a chance to go to the nfl sometimes you can pick the wrong yeah. school that can you know change that path so uh let's start with recruit you said you got recruited by rutgers like when you started like yeah. kind of narrowing things down how was that process going Oh, wow. Well, we, Paris and I visited 27 out of 50 schools that offered him. Yeah, I see, I see you on my 247 Sports. Man, that's that's yeah. awesome. Most people cannot do that, but uh, that's awesome that you did that. That's great. How was that? Yeah, yeah we, we did that. And we were really strategic about it. So, you know, Paris narrowed down the schools that he really liked and – you know, he, of course, he was looking at the athletic piece. I'm looking at academics because my background is that I'm a high school college counselor. Mm -hmm. So I was also looking at the academic side of things as well. So when Paris received an offer from Stanford, then I told him, okay, we can go visit Stanford. And since we're visiting Stanford and we're out there in California, we might as well go to Berkeley. We might as well visit UCLA and Southern California. You know, Paris um, had a strong interest in Notre Dame, so he had a Notre Dame offer and he had a Georgia Tech offer. So certain schools kind of drove where we visited because I wanted him to have a balance of academics and athletics. And so if there was a school in the area that he really wanted to see, then we would visit the other schools that was in that area. So that's how the list grew to 27 mm -hmm. because I felt if we were in California, we might as well hit these other schools too. Hit them up. Um, just to be in research and do, and do the research. And and we learned a lot. We, we learned a lot. We were able to narrow that down fairly quickly because we started visiting schools, I want to say December of 2017. That's when we kind of started doing unofficial visits so mind you I'm paying for all this out of pocket 27 mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. so we started this in, in December and Paris had decided in June yeah it was June of 2018 that he committed to Ohio State so we've did 20 believe 27 schools from December all the way to June mm. um yes and Paris committed to Ohio State and that's where he, he wanted to go he felt an instant connection with Coach Meyer um, in the program at, at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Personally, I didn't see that coming because I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, so our family's from Michigan. Mm -hmm. And so I did not see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I hear> you. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. So, so what are some things that you noticed after taking these visits to these schools, talking to coaches and talking to academic people? What's some things that you notice that might, you might be able to help, you know, some of our listeners out with? Well, I would encourage your listeners to number one is know your child. Find out what your child wants academically as well as athletically and write it down. So I had parents write down what he was looking for in his school. And then that kind of helped our, helped us stay focused. So once we started visiting schools, I have a journal. So I journaled the entire recruiting process. Mm. So I have a journal, and so while we were out visiting schools, I had my list of questions, and I allowed Paris to just really kind of take in the visit and just en enjoy it, learn it, while I was just taking notes the entire time, just taking notes the entire time. Mm -hmm. So while we were out visiting schools, I'm just making note of what's actually hitting what he's looking for in a school. And then at the at the end of the visit, we will go and take a look at, okay, did the school um, match up to what you're looking for? And if the school did not, then we took them off the list. Okay. We took, because we didn't want to waste their time. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to waste their scholarship offer. So we wanted to make sure that not only we were valuing our time, but we also wanted to value the university's time as well. Definitely, definitely. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's number one. Okay. I would encourage parents. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I would encourage parents to find out what their kid is looking for and write that down, and then create a plan and take that with you as you're out visiting and making notes and writing things down and staying and staying on the course. And so that really helped us narrow things down. So we spent a lot of time 
with not just the head coach, but we spent a lot of time with the position coach. We spent mm-hmm. a lot of time with the strength coach. Also, Paris had an opportunity to interact with the boys on the um, in the, the offense alignment mm-hmm. group, just to spend time with them to see if there's some chemistry there um, with those gentlemen as well. Um, I also made sure that I got into a classroom, that I met with academic advisors. So I treated our unofficial business as official business because there was no guarantee we were coming back. Because yep. I really wanted to see if this was going to be a really good fit for Paris. And then also, too, I'm big on relationship, guys. I'm all about relationship positive energy. Mm-hmm. And if I can't pick up positive energy, then that school will be eliminated <laughs> off the list. Um, because I need to know that my son is going to be happy. I need to know when I drop him off that I'm not going to worry about him. And so if I sent any negativity or any stress or worry, the school will come off the list. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Frank or Rob, you want to say something? Well, yeah, I want to know. Like, I, I want to see if, what was I, was I, was I tripping or stupid? Or did you tell me your son didn't go to any camps? No, he didn't go to any camps. No high school camps. None. Like, no rivals, 247, Nike, none of that? No. None of that. The only camp that Paris participated in was the opening. He went to the opening when they had it in Nashville, the regional opening. He went to that. I want to say that was, was that March or April. Please forgive me. I, I'm kind of, with COVID, the, the count, my calendar is kind of off a little bit. But he went to the Nike um, regional the spring of his senior year, of his junior year. And then he participated in the Nike um, national in Texas in the summer going into his, his senior year, but he's never, he, he didn't do any camps, none. Why you said that, Frank? Um, Why you said that, Frank? Rupp? 50, 50 offers, you know, and then say five stars. Most kids and people have the mindset that you have to go to all these camps. I even thought we had to go to all these camps, though, so that son can get looked at and get known or get this. So I'm not sure whether it's because of positioning. Right, and not too many good offensive tackles you can find in the country. Period, period. Right. So, is right. the position, or what was it? Because fifty offers, granted, I know that he's in the middle of the country. So, going either side, I know if you're in Florida, it's very hard to get somewhere out there in California. You know, but being right, in the middle, Ohio. Yeah, I'm right in the Midwest, Cincinnati, Ohio. Exactly. So you go left or right, you know, or either down south, yeah. you can, mm-hmm. you know, touch everything you can. So I was wondering, right. with all the offers that he had and his 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 two four seven everything ranking, that I was still figuring that he had to go to camps, and you just oh. said a new. Like, what, that's what the new so what what, what would right you? Now. I know what I would credit his his success being a five star and all that stuff at, but what would you credit it to? Would you credit it to his just his his film, his coaches, or his coaches getting him out there because Saint Xavier is a national school? I, I've heard of him a lot. Yeah, it's a- yeah, it's a national school. Honestly, I would say it is both. It's his coaches and his film because, gentlemen, we all know that film is not going to lie. Because yeah. your coaches can right. say this kid is the best thing since sliced bread mm-hmm. until you cut that film on. Yeah. And then it's going to speak the truth. So I honestly believe that it was both. I do believe that Coach Beck reached out to these coaches and say, hey, we have a phenomenal kid here. I do believe he did that. And once they got a hand, got their, their hand on that film and saw how Paris was performing and dominating, they knew that he was a great athlete. They, they knew that. And, and no one invited us to camps. No one, Ohio State didn't call us and say, come to a camp even after Paris got offered. We didn't visit not one, didn't attend one camp once Paris received the offer because they were all – Guarantee, because I asked, because again, I didn't want to waste my time. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to waste their time. So I really wanted to know, was the offer really real? And they said, no, ma'am, this offer is real. So, so all right, let's, because I know you don't have much time. So let's get into, um, you said you picked the Ohio State. What was the, like, the yes. the, the full reason for, for picking the Ohio State? So you, you said that. Oh, you, my gosh. Okay. That's a funny story. Well, again, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um, my mother side of the family is from Cincinnati, Ohio. And my mom, my grandparents left 
Cincinnati to move to Detroit for job opportunities, like most people did, like in the 60s and the 70s for job opportunities. Mm -hmm. My family transitioned to the, to the state of Michigan. And so my mother ended up moving back to Cincinnati when I, right before I started high school because my grandmother moved back to the area and she was getting sick. And so my mom wanted to be here to care for her. And so our family slowly moved back from Detroit to Cincinnati. But my dad's side of family still lives in Detroit. So our family it was raised, wasn't raised Buckeyes at all. Mm. Um, if anything, we were uh, Wolverines of Spartans. We rooted against the Buckeyes. Mm -hmm. so was, no one in our family was a Buckeye. So when Paris got the offer to Ohio State, we, everyone, you would think people would be excited about that. Mm -hmm. No. We were more excited about the Michigan State and Michigan offer yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> than we were the Ohio State offer because we're from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people assumed that Paris would, would have been excited about that offer, and they would assume that he would have accepted that offer right away because he was born and raised in Ohio. But no, he wasn't raised a Buckeye at all. So... Once we started that process with Ohio State, Ohio State, Coach Meyer knew that we were not Buckeyes. Mm -hmm. He knew that. He knew that we were all about Michigan State as a family. He knew that. And so Coach Meyer said, hey, let's just throw that out the window. Let's just talk <clears throat> about – he wanted to focus on the philosophy and what Ohio State can do for Paris. Let's not talk about Buckeyes versus the Spartans or versus the team up north. He did. So he's a very smart man. Oh, he so did. He didn't oh, yeah. even focus on that. Mm -hmm. Very smart. If anything, I felt as if Coach Meyer recruited us as if Paris was a national recruit, not from Ohio. So his approach with us was not to sell Ohio State football. Mm -mm. His approach was to sell himself and his philosophy and what he could do to help Paris to develop <laughs> as a football player. Yeah. Um, that was his approach and relationship. So Coach Meyer and, and Paris and I communicated at least every other day. So he built a relationship with us. So he's a very smart man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> very smart man. He is. I, like I said, uh, he, he definitely is. And uh, Coach Day just took the reins and he's doing the same thing. So that's. Oh, Coach Day is doing a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal job. So, um, you know, so Paris committed to Ohio State, but when Coach Meyer announced his retirement in December the, of that same year, Paris felt like the rug was pulled from up under him mm -hmm. because at this point, it's like, okay, do I really know Ohio State now? Mm -hmm. The relationship. You know? Yeah. Right. Because, it, right, do I really know Ohio State now? And so we use that as an opportunity for Paris to kind of step back and and make sure he wanted to remain committed and to also, because he never decommitted from Ohio State, but just want to make sure he was firm in his decision and build a relationship with Coach Day. Mm -hmm. And what I tell you that Coach Day is a phenomenal human being. He he is a great person. He cares for our players. Mm -hmm. He He loves on them. Now, he's firm. Now, <laughs> so don't get it twisted. So he's firm, but he he's very loving. He's very kind, and he's definitely a coach. As what they say, like a play a player coach. coach. Yeah, yeah. He 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 definitely. Yeah. yeah, he's definitely to the point where um, the players are run through a wall because of the the leadership he shows, and, and they they re he's really good for these new millennium type kids also because uh, he he he, he fits well with them like a lot of coach. A lot of old, old school coaches, I don't really feel that they will fit well with these generation of kids. And uh, Coach Day does that I agree. To, to a great, great He does job. that very well. He, he does, and, and Paris says he has an open-door policy. Oh, yeah. you know, he, he always makes himself available to, to the players. Paris loves it at Ohio State. So what, and we are happy. I must tell you, our whole family now are Buckeyes. So everyone in Detroit, mm -hmm. they are no longer – part of the team up north from Michigan Man, State. They're all Buckeyes. That's crazy, so crazy. We all, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> that's, cra that's crazy, crazy. So, um, what, if any, were the adjustments of having uh, Paris uh, his freshman year, other than the COVID situation at home, like what would you give advice to parents that you got to watch out for and stuff like that, communication or whatever? I would suggest that parents work on 
moving from parenting their child to being more of a consultant. Um, because at this point, they're they're on their own and they're going to make their own decisions. Mm-hmm. And so I would just focus on being a consultant. So I spend less time parenting Paris. I spend more time being his consultant. So he can come to me and share with me what he's thinking. And I can help him make his decision instead of telling him what to do, allowing him to make his own decision, but to be there to help guide him through the decision making. So I think parents should focus on stepping back a little bit and just being there to support them, allowing them to take the lead. Uh, I think that's great. What you think, Frank Rupp? I bet you're absolutely right. I'm going through, my son just got to college and played football, nothing yet. And but most of his life, you know, I'm a military guy, so it's always, do this, do this, get up here, do this, do this, always like mm-hmm. short situation. Now he's on his own. It's a different environment for him to learn. So he's like, you know, falling into the fact that, okay, I ain't got mom to tell me to get up. I ain't got dad to tell me to do some push-ups or something. <laughs> so now he's trying to learn his way. And you know, I yeah. think you're totally right about that. You gotta let them learn their way. Because at the end of the day, they will be grown. Like like my wife always told him when he was younger, you're gonna be a child for a little bit, but you'll be a grown person for the rest of your life. That's right. right. So I agree with that. Yeah, and I, and I, try, I always try to. I always gotta catch myself with all these interviews I'm doing with the saying the words kids because they're not kids. They're young men. Um, I just, right. It's just the fact that I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm a hundred years old and my son is. 50 years old, you know what I'm saying? He's still going to be my kid. So, like, uh, I got to watch when I, when I say Absolutely. that. <laughs> you got to watch when I say that. But you had a great point of, of shifting your focus because um, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to have ups and downs. And uh, they got to be able, first of all, to communicate with you no matter what. Uh, that's that's one of the mm-hmm. biggest things is, is communication. When you lose the communication, then, I mean, you have to work on trying to get it back. You know, you're going to have to, you know, ask you know, coaches and talk to the kids and stuff like that. But the, but the biggest thing is communication and just giving them the different options of what they what they what they should and shouldn't be doing because um, helping them with those different options. You know what I'm saying? So because as a as a young man, they, their mind is not you know spread out like ours. And they don't think about everything. They think about tomorrow. We think about you know next year and two years from now because we live life so long. So it's a uh, it's kind of cool uh, molding that process, man, and it, it's it's crazy. So, like, to end everything up, what advice would you give? Especially, I don't I don't know if you're single or not, but what advice would you give a single mom or just parent? Period on this recruitment process, and what advice would you give to a, a young man, a lady trying to you know be in the position that Paris is in? I would say this, you know, going through this process with this recruiting process with, with parents and being a single mom, um, what advice I would give is keep your circle small. Um, you only want to surround yourself with people you know that truly love you and love your son and want what's best for them because sometimes people are led by their own motives. Mm -hmm. Um, So just be really careful with who you bring around because they may have their own agenda for your kid. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So just be really careful, careful with that. Um, And know that it's okay to ask for help. Um, Because I know sometimes as a single parent, we try to do everything on our own, but Mm -hmm. it's okay to ask for help because it definitely takes a village. Mm -hmm. And I know parents would not be where he is if God did not strategically Mm -hmm. put great men in our life to help along the way, mm-hmm. you know? So that that's important. So it's okay to receive the help. Um, and, and it's okay too, sometimes to say you're tired because there's been times where I was tired. Like I would have to get up with Paris. He had to be at St. Xavier High School at 5.45 in the morning. And it was his responsibility to get himself up and get himself ready. Mm-hmm. And he had to wake me up. And so he will wake me up at 4.30 in the morning so we can get ready to get out the door and drive one way 30 minutes to take him to school. Then I would have to drive all the way back home, get my daughter up and get her ready, get her to school, go to work, um, and then pick him back up, pick up my daughter, then do dinner and start all over again. And sometimes I got tired. So it's okay to, to ask for help so you don't have to feel like you're alone in this process. Mm-hmm. So that's the advice I would give. Okay. 
All right, cool, cool, man. Frank Rob, man, take us out, bro. Hey, Darren, Darren, hey, this is another episode here that, you know, another podcast that we've done that I've learned something. What? I don't know what number. We, we on a lot. A lot. We on like 50. <laughs> I learn something every time. There's something new out there. So I know throughout the process of us doing this, somebody out there can learn something from the people that we're, we're interviewing to help better this situation that you're in, that I'm in. So I want to say thank y'all for tuning in. Always remember, you know, every single social media outlet, Facebook, Instagram, anything you want to do, we got it there. So thank y'all for listening. Oh, yeah, thanks, All right, uh, I'll let you two minutes left, so... Uh...